PANDEF replies Senate President Lawan on his comment on restructuring, saying presidency must return to the South. And on the issue of Kaduna protest, APC governors tell NLC to return to the negotiating table and stop flexing muscles. This is Cross Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. The Pan Niger Delta Forum Pandav has condemned the anti restructuring comments made by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan. It said the Senate President's dismissal of the position taken by the 17 Southern state governors across party lines were disgraceful. The group also insisted that the presidency must return to southern Nigeria after President Muhammad Buhari completes his tenure in 2023. Uh, and while speaking on the refusal of the government to sack the Minister of Communications, Issa Pantami, the prelate of the Methodist Church of Nigeria, Samuel Uche, has faulted the lukewarm approach by Mr. President, saying a hidden ethnic supremacy agenda exists. Well, joining me to discuss this is Olalikon Ige. Uh, he is a social commentator, and Ken Robinson is the National Public Publicity Secretary of PANDEF. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you so much for having us uh, again on your program. Thank you. Great. I'll, I'll start with you, um, Mr. Robinson, because PANDEF seems to be in the forefront of this. Um, you, the most important thing that was highlighted in the um, statement that you put out is the fact that the South needs to um, be, or the presidency needs to be zoned to the South of the country. And my question is, why? Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, PANDEF had a general assembly on, on, on the 17th, that's on Monday. And the general assembly is the highest decision-making body of our uh, decision-making organ of our, our organization. And far recent decisions were made and the Niger Delta position was clearly stated. And one of the issues we came out with was that the presidency must return to the South in 2023. There is some kind of unwritten agreement, but in the party's constitution, some of them have clearly stated that power, power rotation is uh, captured in the constitution of some of the parties. And so after eight years of uh, not an in the person of President Muhammad Ubuari, um, being president of the country, power should return to the South. Now, our position is that where it goes in the South is not the matter at this time, whether it is South, West, South, East, or the South, South, is not the matter at this time, but for fairness, equity, and justice, and in the spirit of oneness and to give a sense of belonging to all Nigerians, power must return to the North. And we are saying that it is irrational and unreasonable for anybody, for anybody, anybody at all uh, from the northern part of the country, whether it be it North East, North West or North Central, to consider uh, taking over from President Mohamed Bouhari. And it will be completely unacceptable. We have said it is non-negotiable and it will be totally unacceptable for anybody outside of the southern part of the country to, to, to become president of Nigeria in 2023. That's our position. I know that you're not necessarily a politician per se, but I want to push you because you're coming up with this idea of, or PANDEF is saying that the South must ha have that presidency after, uh, come 2023. But I'm curious, um, if we were to point to the South, let's for example say, well, we're giving power, we're zoning and rotating power to the South. Who are the people in the South that would, um, unanimously say, well, we're going to either give it to the southeast or the southwest, or maybe the south-south. Do you think that there's that unity of purpose in the south? Because, of course, yes, the southern governors have come out for the first time in a long time to stand against the issue of insecurity um, across the country. But when it comes down to party politics, um, can we really say that there will be unity of purpose or will there not be a division of sorts when it's time if the if parties political parties decide that they're going to give you um the south uh, southerners an opportunity to choose your president are we sure that there's going to be that unity of purpose as we're still hearing it in your voices right now politics uh pandef is not a political organization pandef is an organization that projects and uh, protects the interests of the Niger Delta people. But as, as you know, perhaps more than I do, 
um, everything centers around politics in Nigeria. And politics is about the distribution and control of wealth. Uh, who gets what, what goes where. Uh, and so we, we are saying that uh, the, the, the issue at this very moment is not whether it will be southwest, southeast, or south-south. But let me, let me say that there is a new awakening, a, a, a kind of a new realization that things cannot continue the way they have gone on in this country forever, in, in, in perpetuity. Things must change. And, and, and you can see the change that is happening. There, there, are, there are realignments going on. People are beginning to realize that, look, we need to work together and that uh, together we are stronger. And, and that's demonstrated by the meeting of the Southern Governors um, on the 11th of May, mm. where they put aside party uh, inclinations and party variances and came together and spoke the mind of the people of Southern Nigeria as a body, as one people, not whether APC, PDP or any other party. And I'm sure that that spirit and that, that, that new realization will go forward and, and we will produce a Nigerian president that will be president of all Nigerians, not mm. a president of a section. And in every section of the Southern Nigeria, whether it be it South East, South West or South South, we have Nigerians, people with capacity, capability and the mentality to become, to, 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 to become president of Nigeria, not president of South West or South East or South South. Okay. And that's what we say we want to give to Nigeria someone that will be the president of Nigeria, not the kind of presidency that we see today that is lopsided and skewed against a section of the country in favor of a particular section. We okay. must move away from that, that, that situation. Okay, let me go to you, um, Olale Konge. Um, just following up on what he has said, the Pandef and several other people are pushing for um, you know, zoning of the presidency to come to the South-South. Now, I remember vividly, uh, a few months ago, I interviewed the um, Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party when um, the party members in Edo State were pushing that the presidency be zoned to the South-South. And I was asking if the PDP had any plans for 2023 to zone their um, presidency to the South South, and he said no, that they that everybody should throw their hats into the ring. And I also haven't heard the APC screaming at the top of their voices that they are zoning um, the presidential um, primaries or giving it to the South South or even the South in its entirety. So, again, I'm asking how feasible is this push for uh, zoning in to the southern parts of the country, whether it be South Southwest, Southeast, or South South? Yeah, politics is a game, uh, remember, and uh, it's all about positioning, it's all about bridge building, it's all about appeal, it's all about connection, it's, it's all about making people really. Uh, ordinarily, the presidency should be returning to the south in 2023, over the, the northern part of Nigeria, producing Nigerian presidency for eight years, and it's only natural that it comes to the southern part of Nigeria. Whether it will be southeast, south south, or southwest remains debatable. The most important thing is zone it to the southern part of Nigeria to have a Nigerian presidency, and the south cannot begin to put it out in order. If they can't put uh, their house in order, then who will they blame? Huh. Okay, now, let, let's talk about the reasons behind the zoning. Yes, you have said that ordinarily, but I mean, like you also said, it's politics and, and it's a game. Um, then, like I've said, the PDP has said outrightly that every hat should be thrown into the ring. So it could, it could, it could be anybody that emerges, and that person may not necessarily be from the South. But do you think that maybe Pandef is being a bit too emotional because of what's happening in the country, um, because of the insecurity, or maybe because of how people perceive Mr. President's um, handling of the, you know, the issues that the country is facing, and that's why the South is agitating for what they're agitating. And if, if there be any pointers to people that we would want to front or political parties might want to front, who are those people? Remember, in the South, there's always that division when it comes down to it to pick who should represent us. Then we remember where that person is from or that, that, that the person is not truly a, maybe a Niger Delta or truly a Southeastern. How do they blur those lines? Well, I think it's for uh, the South to, de uh, to determine the southern part of Nigeria has 
enormous human resource that can occupy the presidency of Nigeria, whether it be any person of any nationality. We have the resource, we have the material, we have the human being, we have people who are competent enough to lead this country. We have former governors, former senators, former uh, House of Assembly member, wherever they may come from. The South has the enormous capacity to produce a Nigerian president. Remember, we are not talking of a president of the South. We are talking of a president that will rule the entire Nigeria as a federation. So the materials are there. Allow the political parties to zone their presidency whatsoever to any part of Nigeria. If PDP is saying, look, every part of Nigeria should throw its ass into the ring, no problem. That's how to build uh, connection, that's how to build bridge, that's how to appeal to people. It's left for people who are members of southern part of Nigeria, who are in PDP, to appeal to the generality of the party to say, look, look at our track record, look at what we have done for you. Can you please bring this to the south? It's also for the people in APC. The North uh, has the president, has had the presidency for eight years. President Muhammad Dubari is a member of APC. So it's also for members of APC from the southern part to also appeal to everybody, you know, across the divide to say, look, you vote presidency for eight years. Why don't you give it to us to let us have a fair share of what is going on? And to be fair to some leaders of APC, uh, particularly the, the governor of Pronunci, Zulum and some other APC members have said, look, power must go deep and it must go to the south in 2023. So it's for people from the southern part of Nigeria to continue to build bridges ahead of 2023, appeal to the generality of the party, and also remember, power is not given freely. It is negotiated, it is battled for. So they must also put our house in order. Please grant us this desire to have presidency of a southern extraction, then allow the political parties to go through their, uh, the membership of the parties, go through the party primary, and wherever they emerges, the rest of Nigeria will vote for such a person. All right, let me go back to uh, Mr. Ken Robinson. Uh, Mr. Robinson, Pandef, again, has spoken about Mr. President's handling. You called it lukewarm, to borrow your words. And, of course, you... Um, seem not to be okay with how the president has handled the issue of insecurity. Now, the president, as we speak, is um, in France having a meeting um, with other African leaders, with the French president, Emmanuel Macron. Uh, but a lot of people have criticized the fact that he was quick to jet set to France to talk about issues other than what is happening um, in his backyard. And, of course, um, the president also spoke recently about what's happening in Israel and Palestine. But yes, we do have an issue in Nigeria. Um, and the president well, has spoken on, he spoke on the, 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 the heels of Edel Fitri, and he did say that he was going to put an end to banditry. Uh, but what, what else must the president do to show Nigerians that he's responding to our cry? Well, let, let me borrow your word by saying that uh, we have issues in our backyard and we are more concerned about issues um, that are in the... Uh, uh, other countries. But, but having said that, let, let, let us restate our position that the greatest problem of Nigeria today is the way and manner the affairs of state are being conducted. That's the greatest problem. Nepotism is the greatest challenge we have. There is general disaffection. People are not happy. There is anger. There is hunger in the land. And when those situations exist, people may do things that ordinarily they would not want to do. So, so the, the first thing that Nigerian government, President Muhammadu Buhari, should do is not uh, soliciting for assistance from outside the country, but is correcting the errors in the country that are the root causes of some of the challenges we have, for instance, and we'll continue to say this. In a country of such a diversity, we have 17 top appointments, heads of top military, paramilitary intelligence agencies in the country that are consigned with the security of the country. 14 of them are from one section of the country. Only three are from the south, southeast, south, south, and southwest. Some states in some certain parts of the country, the northern part of the country, has two of those kind of offices. And you want people to be happy in that kind of a situation? And you think that the security will be right? But I say is, this with I'm all sorry, sense of responsibility. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to play cannot the... go right until we are doing I'm how sorry. governance is handled in Nigeria. I'm sorry to talk over you, but I want to play the devil's advocate here. That is not the making of the president, is it? Because um, I've, I've spoken to a former uh, service chief before, and he did say something in the, uh, you know, in the line of um, 
You know, we do not have as many people from the South, you know, in those ranks, especially the highest of the ranks, uh, that can be picked and chosen immediately when they need somebody to be made a service chief. We do have them, but not in the numbers that you have uh, in the North. So could that also be that maybe we do not have many people in those, you know, um, regiments, and that's why we're unable to have them in those positions at the time when we need them. And you know how it is. You cannot really pick somebody from under to be the head of any security or armed force because, you know, this is, perhaps, how, this is perhaps, the most of perhaps, but we also ask that we also do not have uh, people that could be MD of N NPA. We also do not have anybody in the southern Nigeria that could be MD of NIMASA. You see, there has been a systematic elimination of our people in some of those organizations and those agencies. And it is deliberate to put us um, in a disadvantaged well, we position. We did have a Dakuku to, put to put in, in NIMASA recently, didn't we? So why was the change taken? Why, why were we changed? And then somebody from Kano or Kaduna was replaced by replaced somebody from River State. And then the person from Kano or Kaduna was retained in NPA. These, these are the, the inconsistencies and imbalances that are causing disaffection in the country. People are not satisfied with how uh, we are running this country. And we have again and again called on Mr. President to make changes, make amendments in how he runs affairs of state, in appointments at various levels in government, in federal agencies, ministries, and departments. You know, but, but they are not listening. And we will continue to have these issues. Nobody can salvage Nigeria for us. Nigerians will have to salvage this country. The people carrying out some of these activities in some parts of the country are not foreigners. Though we, we understand some of the bandits are from outside the country. But some of the activities, the persons who are, who are terrorizing lives in, in the creeks of the Niger Delta, they are not from Cameroon, they are not from Niger Republic, they are Nigerians. People who are dissatisfied, people who are hungry, people who are unemployed. And so government needs to sit up and address these issues. France, United States, UK can do their best, but they won't solve our problems. Look at Somalia, it's, it's been on. Nobody's been able to solve the problem. Look at Afghanistan, it's been on. Let us not allow Nigeria to degenerate to those, those states. And it's important that these people should listen and act. Okay, Olaleko, um, I'm gonna throw the question to you. Uh, there, as you know, we all live in Nigeria. The issues that we're facing are numerous. Uh, it started as, you know, pockets of violence, but then it has metamorphosed into a hydra-headed monster and which has also created a, a playing field for all. So even people who are criminal, just criminals in nature, have taken up arms and become, you know, have been named under unknown gunmen. And so all kinds of things are happening in the country. Um, why do you think that it took Mr. President so long to deal with this situation? And now that we have a full-blown problem, what is still stopping Mr. President from speaking? Because there are people who've asked that Mr. President speak and address the people, allay their fears, uh, but he has not done that. There have been also people who have called for Mr. President's impeachment because of his inability, in their words, to handle the situation. What do you think the challenge is? Well, I think it's to, first of all, admit that the security architecture of Nigeria has collapsed. It's been coming, really. How much have we invested into security architecture in Nigeria? A lot in of the money. In the last 10, 20 years, how much have we invested in security? Security is not just about the human beings. What about the, uh, us in putting um, ICT into security? And how much are we spending on security, really? The next obvious question is, are we spending enough on security? My answer is absolutely no. We should be spending nothing less than 25, 30, 40 percent of Nigeria's GDP. Our GDP as of today is put at about 500 billion dollars. It means minimum that we should be spending on security every year should be about 50 billion, should be about 100 billion. How much is United States that is so secure spending on security? How much is Israel? How much is United Kingdom? How much is France? How much is Germany? How much? Check how much they spend on security every year. They know that Nigeria is not even anywhere near security. I doubt to that we're up to one million policemen in Nigeria. It is the responsibility of Nigeria police to ensure internal security. When last do you recruit into the Nigeria police? When last did you buy uh, Adam software for uh, Nigeria police? How many police have functional uh, police stations have functional CCTV in Nigeria? How many police stations even have national data crime base? How many police stations in Nigeria have 
forensic department, well-equipped forensic department to help us analyze crime situations. There are a whole lot of things that we need to look at. Otherwise, even if we elect another president in 2023, if we don't urgently change the way and manner we handle security architecture in Nigeria, we will not achieve any results. And there's no doubt about it. Save for the governors. Nigeria police may have collapsed. Remember that it is most state governors who buy operational vehicles for police, buy bulletproof for police. Some have even gone to the extent of trying to acquire guns for police. Some have built police stations for police. Not too long ago, some uh, security personnel were killed in River State. It is the River State government that has brought about, about uh, 280 million to give to the families of the disease. How much has police itself have been able to bring that? How much has the Nigerian army been able to bring that? How much has the cost of building to bring that for its own personnel? So what are the kind of um, uh, kind of engagement we need to these security personnel? We need to urgently review our security, uh, security architecture. We need to look at the issue of state police. In much more decent societies, where we all love to copy the United Kingdom, the United States, in France, in Germany, in Italy, we have we have metropolitan police. They have even devolved beyond the level of state. For example, we have what is called London Metropolitan Police. It's restricted strictly to the city of London. Yeah. We have the Johannesburg Metropolitan Police. It's restricted to the city of Johannesburg. So why don't we have Lagos Metropolitan Police? Why don't you have Portaco Metropolitan Police? Why don't you have Aba Metropolitan Police? Because the more you keep security closer to the people, the better you're able to know what is going on within uh, uh, this city. Well, like, uh, um, uh, the governors, the, the, the um, Southern Governors Forum, and of course, uh, the PDP Governors Forum, I think just yesterday, had asked that we the, the president devolve the police force. Uh, they've asked that he he signed an executive order so that they can actually have state policing. And this is just almost in line with what you're saying. But it seems like uh, it's rocket science. It seems like it's never going to happen because it became a blame game of sorts where the APC is blaming the PDP. You were here for 16 years. You didn't do it. Why do you want us to do it? But then the PDP is saying, well, APC, you used this to campaign against us in 2015, saying, Saying that you wanted to devolve the police and bring some form of restructuring. Why haven't you done it? So, and I had a guest yesterday who perceived or seemed to say that none of the people on either sides of the divide seem to really want to do what's right by Nigerians because they're politicizing the issue instead of doing what the people need to be done. Yes, hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I think what's important here is not for us to continue to apportion blame is to look at the reality of what is on ground. Each state has its own peculiarity. The amount of police needed in River State might not be the same number of police needed in Ekiti State because different kinds of crimes are committed in different in all manner of states. So you must allow the states to tailor police to the needs of that particular state. Lagos, for example, we need by far more police than, Zam than Zamfara State. So you can see how the state police should come because the police with uh, the state we determine how many policemen they need, how much worth of equipment are they going to buy, how much worth of neighborhood safety corps can they bring up, how much worth of local government can they even police. Because security is particular to every state. And that's why we must evolve. If we have been doing the same thing since 1960, when we got independence, and it's not giving us a different result, it means that we need to change. We just have to find a way going forward. We need to spend more. I, I, I'm sure uh, from records I got, United States spent more, United States of America spent more than $500 billion on security last year alone. That is a nation that is well secure with the best of technology, with the best of training, with the best of technology. $500 billion on security. How much has Nigeria spent in the last 10 years on security? I doubt whether it's up to $10 trillion. And $10 trillion is less than $10 billion US dollars or probably a little more than uh, uh, $10 billion. So you begin to understand that, look, we need to rejig our security architecture. Okay. Our borders are so porous. How do we police the borders? How do we get the best of technology? The Nigerian Immigration Service, how many functional helicopters do they have? The Nigerian Customs Service, how many functional helicopters do they have? The Nigerian Police, how many functional helicopters do they have? 
we need to bring all of our best to the table okay. and ensure that we have security. Because without security, there's really no need for us to have a nation because everything will grind to us. And that's why Nigeria is M origin at the moment. Okay, thank you very much. Let me go finally to you, uh, Mr. Ken Robinson. Uh, before we go, the Methodist prelate had uh, knocked Mr. President, um, calling him uh, a Fulani president and said that what we have is a Fulani presidency. In fact, uh, he also said that um, the approach um, of the presidency to handling the Isa Pantami issue and, um, you know, allegations of him being tied to um, terrorists is deplorable. He also spoke about, the, he suggested that uh, the president is a one-sided president and, and that's why Nigeria is facing what it is facing. Now, I'm asking this question because in the midst of all of the insecurity that we're having, we're also having ethnic tensions. Um, I'm sure you're aware because you read the papers of what Sunday Boho had said some days ago that um, uh, an assault on uh, IPOB is an assault on the Yoruba nation. Even though a lot of people have kicked against it, but there, there are people who are saying something obviously has made room for these ethnic tensions that we've always had, which have been an undertone of sorts, to become so loud and emboldened in today's Nigeria. But how, do we, how do we make sure that it doesn't become a bigger problem? going forward? It's the, Mr. Ige has uh, made some very um, apt statements concerning insecurity in the country and, and Nigeria is spending on security. But uh, we will continue to emphasize that there is a root cause of this, these problems. There is growing or increasing uh, agitations for us, uh, for separation. Uh, and we see that increasing. There is the Middle Belt movement. There is the Oduduwa movement, of course, there is a Biafra movement. Pandev, as an organization, believes in the unity of Nigeria. But we are insisting that Nigeria must be a country of justice, equity, and fairness. And that is what is missing today in this country. It is missing. Uh, the, the Catholic priest is right. The tendencies of being a sectional president are obvious. They are very obvious. In every sector, you see it. We cited the, the situation in the military and paramilitary. You, you see what's going on in, in, in the oil sector. And in every, every critical sector of the public service, these this, this tendencies and biases and inconsistencies and lopsidedness is there, that this president uh, favors a particular area of this country. And so people are disaffected. People feel that they are not being considered part of Nigeria. You see people from the South being removed from offices you know, in a very disgraceful manner and, and treated as if they are not Nigerians, as if they are foreigners. This country belongs to all of us. The Niger Delta people, we have contributed so much to the development of this country. And we are saying that this attitude cannot continue. Okay. All and right. it is the, is, the, is the beginning of the pollution for the problems in Nigeria. Okay. Well, Ken Robinson is our PANDEF and Olale Koenge is a social commentator. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. We All appreciate right. it. All right. Well, we'll take a short break. And when we return, we hear what the APC governors have to say about the rift going on between the Kaduna State Governor, Nasser El Rufai, and the NLC. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.